Hi, and welcome to the Google Cloud and Nokia series on cloudification of telecom provider networks, why now, and how. I'm Ankur Jain, Head of Engineering for Google Cloud for Telecommunication, Edge, and Container Networking. I am Jitin Bhandari, Chief Technology Officer for Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. There's a difference between cloud and cloud native. There is a difference between the gossip of cloud and cloud native. I happen to have a deep conversation with Dr. Lester Thomas, where he was elaborating on using the cloud native principles, how Vodafone was able to create value, and especially business value for their networks. Today, I have a great pleasure of having a service provider perspective um, from the same topic, and I have with us Dr. Lester Thomas, who heads uh, new technology and innovations for Vodafone Global. And um, what better way to ask such a broad operator, a global operator like Vodafone and their perspectives about why cloud native and why now? In the broader context of Vodafone's 5G strategy and the way uh, Vodafone is transforming their networks, why cloud native and why now? What's, what's, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, um, a big part of our strategy around 5G and, so 5G and IoT is actually offering services beyond humans and smartphones. And we believe there's like a real opportunity to offer new services in multiple industry and generate new revenues. Um, and we think there are some critical services that can be addressed by you know, connecting and making smart things in society in, in lots of different industries like energy, manufacturing, agriculture, healthcare. And we believe there's lots of opportunity to innovate on top of 5G services. So you know, imagine make, you know, the ability to make everything on the planet a smart connected thing. So for example, having factories full of smart connected robots, connecting all medical diagnostic devices so the data is instantly captured and analyzed. Like the opportunities are endless. And I'd like to think of it of, you know, you take the innovation over the last like couple of decades, there's been a massive amount of innovation in the internet. And I think about taking that innovation, you know, limited the internet and actually bring it into the real world. But first, there's a couple of challenges. So, so one of them is as we move into these vertical industry platforms, we believe we're going to drive a greater sort of functional complexity. So you think about our current business. So currently we sell fixed line, mobile, broadband, TV. And we've made selling actually quite complex. Our internal systems are quite complex. But as we move forward, we think we're going to move from these four basic services to, to hundreds or thousands of services addressing all these different, different needs of these different vertical industries. Um, the other challenge is these new opportunities could have a massive scale, but they often have very tight margins. Um, and one thing we, we see in cloud native and what the hyperscalers have achieved is we think we can use that as a mechanism to drive an order of magnitude greater operational effic efficiency by adopting these cloud native approaches, open source technologies like Kubernetes, things like an API first approach. So we see there's an opportunity and we think that this is like the right approach to address those opportunities. You're saying that the verticals are already out there, but they are very tightly integrated silo verticals, the way you are operating in your business paradigm today. And you think cloud native is, is just the perfect tool, if I may say, of transforming your networks. Um, would you like to dig deeper a bit on the kind of challenges you're seeing around cloud native? Why now? I mean, from a perspective that, you know, is this a technology enabler? Is this a business enabler? Is this both? Um, I know you talked about the business enablement aspects of it, that how it can do new verticalization at scale, the true promise of 5G. But are you seeing technological challenges out there? I think about the the opportunity of cloud native versus like a cloud migration. So, you know, we've been investing in cloud for quite a long time, you know, for, you know, we probably started our cloud journey five or six years ago. And when we started, you know, some of the things we were just migrating to the cloud. And you think about it, when you migrate existing systems and applications to the cloud, you, almost like the tendency is to take all your operational processes with them. And so you, you can always question, what real you know business drive what real business benefit that that gives you was the cloud native approach is, is literally doing the opposite saying actually i'm going to adopt these cloud these cloud native technologies i'm going to adopt these cloud services and it causes you to rethink how you actually develop software and our cloud native approach is typically coupled with 
you know, agile delivery methods, DevOps, so you can cite reliability engineering as the way in which you operate it, and things like much more focused on data and open APIs. In fact, the, the Vodafone sort of the tech 2025 strategy is called the Vodafone Open Digital Architecture Strategy. And it's about how do we open up and use these technologies to drive sort of uh, you know platforms on which we can rapidly innovate and the services we build because of the scalability we can rapidly scale them and also that you know they're an order of magnitude more efficient than the the old way of doing things oh that this is a very interesting view and i, I must say that you know here at nokia from from a vendor community standpoint you know we are seeing tremendous join between networks operations assurance and analytics if if i may say of how we build, operate, manage our networks. And uh, we are seeing from our perspective, from the ground up principles of cloud native, of how we can transform that space, not only just on the network side of things, but also from the operations assurance and overall experience that we bring to our services, the new age services that gets built on. Um, are you seeing that opportunity behind cloud native and redesigning, rebuilding these networks behind the movement of 5G and cloud? Do you see it's broader than networks role? And if so, how so? How so the operational simplification that you touched upon? Would love to hear, hear Vodafone's view from a global perspective. Yeah, well, what we did in Vodafone, like when we, like you could see the sort of the approach that hyperscales were using. And, you know, a few years ago, we didn't really have the in house capabilities to really adopt the same approaches. So we actually decided to start by almost like building in house solutions more on our digital experience layer. We often describe like our, our digital transformation as having two phases. And if you think about like our current business, so creating a digital version of our current business. So we did a lot of work in the digital experience layers, so all the digital channels that we engage with our customers with. And, and so in all of our markets, we built what we call a digital accelerator. So in-house agile DevOps teams, building out those digital channels, building a Vodafone experience using all these great technologies. So we have Kubernetes deployed in our digital channels in all our markets around the world. And we've, again, and at the same time, we've adopted, you know, agile DevOps processes in, in, in some markets. Now we have a full site reliability engineering approach where actually the operations itself is run by, you know, by the operators aren't human operators, they're pieces of software. So we have a site reliability engineering team who write the software that runs the operations. And it, it completely removes the, the ability or the opportunity for human error to be introduced into our production systems. So we started there, and that, that's the first phase of our, our transformation. But the second phase is what I mentioned earlier, is about how do we become digital enablers of this ecosystem model? So how do we turn like 5G as a platform, like a cloud-like platform mm -hmm. on which other people can innovate? So how do you offer those 5G services through open standard APIs that other people can build You know, in these different industries? It's not gonna be Vodafone, in sort of a medical industry, it will be one of the you know our medical industry sort of uh, enterprise partners building the solutions. But what enabling services can we provide to, to make that happen? Oh, that, that that's actually a very fantastic point. Look, I mean, I, I'll be honest, right? From both a vendors community and if I reflect, um, if I may say, from a CSP side of it, collectively we have struggled in the last decade of creating more value out of what we say the telco networks. And I'm glad that you're nodding your head and, and agreeing to my conclusions here. And one of the biggest challenges through this era of NFV and virtualization is we could never open up our networks and operations, right? The way it should be. And, um, you know, the IT domains, the web scalers have done a fantastic job of opening up the APIs, uh, creating a value ecosystem of partners, building a platform that actually, you know, fuels innovation. What should we be doing collectively different to create more value in that ecosystem play? You know, how should we approach this differently? And would love to hear your views on that. Yeah, like I agree, like the last decade or even slightly longer in the in the telco space has been very, very tough. Like the our revenues have been flat and the underlying use of our network has been growing at like a compound, a tremendous rate. So almost like we've been giving away far and far more data every year for a flat revenue. It's been really tough. But this is why the most of these 5G opportunities are, you know, we, we look at them with sort of uh, they're so important because we, we genuinely can see, and we're already starting to, to deliver them, that there are lots of opportunities to use this great technology. So the question is, if you're an enterprise customer, like what do you actually want from a telco? 
And I, and I believe that it's not just like connectivity or devices, often almost like the service they want, they want to abstract all of that complexity. And if you think of this is what the sort of the, the cloud plays have done with sort of infrastructure services, they've abstracted the complexity of, of building and operating them and they make it very simple with intent-based APIs where you just demand what you want. We think we need to take the same sort of approach. And I think for a lot of these, the actual, you know, um, the service lots of our enterprise uh, customers want is actually a data service. You know, they don't want to manage thousands or tens of thousands of devices and, and collect that data themselves. They effectively want that to be done, done as part of the telco service. They really want the sort of the, the ability to have that data and to then really drive use cases and analytics and you know having digital twins on those on those services. So I think that's the key is like you know abstracting the complexity, open standard APIs, like all of the APIs that we're developing are we're delivering effectively in open source communities, a lot of them through sort of standards bodies like the TM Forum. Um, so collaborating even with our competitors on the open standard interfaces, intent driven models, and actually often gone beyond just the connectivity of the service you're offering. So often things like digital twins or even offering data and analytics services back to these enterprise customers. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Lester. Jitin, it was great to hear Dr. Thomas's point of view. Uh, what were your key takeaways? Not only he was talking about how the workloads are moving into cloud, but he was very elaborate in talking about how they're using cloud native design principles. When we talk about agility, open APIs, and creating business values for their networks. Thanks for catching our discussion on cloudification of telco networks. Next time, we'll see you in the cloud.